Hey guys, wanted to tell you real quick about our podcast host and sponsor, Anchor.fm. If you're thinking about starting your own podcast, I highly recommend Anchor. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. They'll distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. And you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go out to anchor.fm to get started. That's anchor.fm. Now back to the show. The Cannabis Heals Me Podcast, Episode 79. You're listening to the Cannabis Heals Me podcast, where we explore the real stories of real people who have discovered the profound healing properties of the cannabis plant in their own lives. Find more at CannabisHealsMe.com. Welcome back, everyone, to the Cannabis Heals Me podcast. This is your host, Rachel Kennerly, coming to you once again from the Storybook and Studios. Hope you guys are having a great Monday, that your kids are not still hungover from their Halloween candy high. Hopefully they didn't eat it all this weekend. Maybe you uh, taxed it sufficiently enough that they didn't get too much sugar in their system. We've survived. You know, we're listening to the podcast, or in my case, I'm recording the podcast. So we have survived, and we can uh, put another one on the books for this uh, 2019 year. 2020, here we come. If you haven't done so already, I'm going to go ahead and ask, as I normally do, that you go out and subscribe to the podcast so it'll automatically download to the app of your choosing. And while you're out there, give us a rating or a review so that your podcast catcher will actually recommend this show to other people and we can get these stories out to more people. I'm also going to ask you that you tell three people about the podcast. It's our tell three people challenge. I want every week, if you don't mind, you know, because it's all voluntary here, I would like for you to share the podcast with three people. Pick a story that particularly appealed to you and tell three people about it. Let's get the word out about the medicinal properties of this plant. It's not about getting high. Of course, some people think that they're doing it recreationally, but really, honestly, a lot of the people that I've talked to on this show that they thought they were consuming cannabis recreationally, but when it came right down to it, there was an underlying medical condition they needed that cannabis. Even though they thought they were doing it for rec, it was really, and they were meeting an unaddressed medical need. So it's pretty interesting that that people think that, oh, I'm just doing this for fun. But, you know, maybe it's not just for fun. Maybe you are actually medicating your body in a way that you need, even though you don't know it, your body knows it. So tell three people about the podcast. We would sincerely appreciate that. And uh, get the word out about these stories. We need more people to know about the medicinal benefits of this plant. Because we got 80 years of propaganda that we're we're fighting against. And, and honestly, we don't have the bully pulpit. We've got to make our voice heard where we can. So tell three people about the podcast. And if you are a super plucky personality, go ahead and let one of those people be a rabid prohibitionist. Maybe you'll change your mind. Maybe you will turn somebody from a rabid prohibitionist, again, like I used to be, into someone who is going to go out and be an evangelist for this plant. You never know whose life you might touch. You never know who you might influence by sharing this podcast with them. So tell three people about the podcast. Now, our guest last week was David Grantham. And the way I found out about David was I read an article in an Alabama newspaper about a medical cannabis commission. And another gentleman mentioned in that article was Tim Morris. I was able to find David on Facebook pretty quickly, but Tim Morris, it was a little harder to track him down on Facebook. So I actually reached out to the guy who wrote the article and said, hey, you know, do you have contact information for Tim? And he said, no, I don't. And then amazingly, like two days later, the guy emailed emailed me back, said, hey, Tim called me and he said he wants to talk to you. So here's his number. And thanks to Brian Lyman, who is the reporter at the Montgomery Advertiser, I was able to get contact information for Tim Morris. So I reached out to Tim. We were able to connect. And Tim's going to join me today and share his story of how medical cannabis helps him in his daily life. Hey, Tim, welcome to the Cannabis Heals Me podcast. I really appreciate you coming on to share your story. And I know that it's a little scarier to do that when you're living in a non-legal state like Alabama. Sure is, especially when they come in on you, you know, and then you, and then you get a warrant served on you, you know, and, and and you find out a month or you find out four months later, they come and pick you up for a CBD bud, for CBD flower. Um, then I found out that the warrant to arrest me was actually a month after I got searched. Oh, wow. 
Yeah, it took them four months to come get me, though. But the reason why they came and got me, because I've been blowing this up on Facebook, and that's exactly why they came in on me. And I got an unsigned warrant. So yeah. are you still dealing with law enforcement on that? Do you have an a, attorney or anything yes, like I am. that? I, I, I can't afford an attorney. I don't make with Social Security. I mean, SSI, I make seven seventy one a month. By the time I pay my bills, I got nothing left. Right. I don't even have enough left to get me medicine through the month. You know, um, unfortunately, I can't help that. I mean, they, that's just what they give me. You know, so it is what it is. But, uh, yeah, I'm still dealing with it. I go to court on December the 9th. Um, I'm going to request that the case gets thrown out. I am going to be dealing with the SPLC on uh, violation of my rights. Okay. So, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deal with it. But I live in a crooked town, so, I mean, that's just the way it is. I don't want you to put yourself in jeopardy by talking to me and, and sharing your story because I, I don't want to give the the police or law enforcement any additional ammunition. Are, are you okay with, I mean, like I hey, said, I don't want to. Like it's, it's like I said in that meeting, they're not going to stop me. Yeah. They're not going to stop me from doing it. I know what it does for me. Um, um, I'm not one to like these pills. In fact, they gave me some Percocets for the next, tw you know, for until I go to the neurosurgeon on the 4th of November. And they're only Percocets five. I take one, two hours more, I'm taking another one. So these 12 pills, I ain't even going to last till the 4th. So, and it's terrible. I mean, it's just pathetic. You know, and then I get stereotyped because I look like a biker, you know, I look like a, uh, a druggy drunk biker is what they think, I guess. I, I I just don't like it. I hate it every time I deal with it. You know, and then if you say something about, oh, we're not stereotyping you. Well, if you ain't giving me no drugs, neither. I know a guy that's got the same amount of same amount of problems I got. He's on Percocet, Oxycontin, and Lortab. How in the heck does that happen? And I don't, I can't even get a, a one pill without arguing with it or threatening to blow my brains out. Well, I hate hearing that, you know, Tim. It's, it's sad. I mean, it's just sad. So when this came about, and um, I found out through Normal and TC, and they got me in this, it just felt like a calling for me that I needed to blow the doors open on this. You know, and I'm in it for the fight. I mean, because I know the qualities it does for me. And, it, and it's not just necessarily the THC that they think is going to make you high and loopy. I mean, yeah. You know, I've, I've smoked pots when I was, since I was 13 years old, I used to do it for fun. Didn't know it had all the qualities it had back then. But as I gotten older and gotten health problems, I started reading a lot on it and finding out new stuff and all this new, all this new, uh, research has come out and it's enlightened me on it. You know, so, and, and of course, as a regular smoker, you don't get that high to where you're loopy and stupid. Don't know what you're doing. You know, it just doesn't happen. You know, yeah, your so, body builds up a tolerance, right? Yes, it does. So I may smoke a joint and not get really high on it, but someone who just smoked one may get to the floor, <laughs> you know, depending on what strength of quality that you got. Well, that's the downside with the black market is you don't really know what you're getting. You don't know what the ratios are with THC to CBD well, and all the terpenes and all that jazz. Since they broke it down into vapes and stuff, yes especially when they break it down into uh tinnitures and stuff like that you know i mean you're 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 talking about pure thc and yeah you can get the thc up to 80 per 80 90 percent then but as a regular marijuana plant you'll be lucky if you get it up to 26 27 percent so take us take us back in history to to what kind of led you down to the path to to looking at cannabis as medicine i had open heart surgery in 2009 um, it's probably what saved my life. Oh, wow. Um, because I had five clogged up arteries. I had the widow maker at a hundred percent. I had three at a hundred percent, one at 90 and one at 80. Wow. Um, so they had emergency surgery on me the next morning and, uh, they opened me up and replaced it, took the artery out on my, my left leg and did all the work up there. But it was from a thyroid going bad, and it caused too much foot fat in my blood, and it clogged me up real quick. And I actually asked my cardi my uh, cardiologist if uh, 
marijuana was what probably saved my life. And he said, well, you know, I don't know, but I think it might have had something to do with it. And I said, well, that's the only thing I can think of. He said, well, when we seen your widow maker 100%, he said, we didn't even know if we was going to make it through the night. Oh, wow. You know, and I was like, well, thank God I did, you know. And, and I went through it, and I ain't had no more problems with my heart ever since. I've never even took no little white pill that, you know, when you have, think you're having a heart attack, they give you the little nitro pills. I, I haven't even taken a one, and it's been August 23rd was 10 years. Wow. So I haven't took a, not a one. So now that they re, re, uh, redone the veins or the arteries in there, of course, I'm not blocked up no more. And they mm-hmm. got me on the thyroid medicine that I got to take for the rest of my life. I don't have no pain from it. I mean, nothing. My shoulders hurt for a long time, and they still give me some fits every now and then. But that's just where they crack me open. And they said, I'm just going to have that from time to time. Um, so in 2010, um, from, this is from August of 2009 In 2010, I tried to go back to work and I was a dish installer trainer. In other words, I trained people how to put it in. And plus I was a field service manager to make sure people put it in right. Um, and could, and actually that's climbing up in attics or up under trailers or, you know, whatever I couldn't do it. I mean, I just could not do it. It was hurting me too much. I didn't have the, the I, you know, no, I wasn't young no more. I found out. And, and I told them I had to quit because I just couldn't do the job, you know, and it wasn't fair to them. And, and you know, I, I just wasn't going to put them in that kind of situation. So I ended up going for my Social Security, mm-hmm. which naturally they denied me for about six years. And I ended up finally getting my SSI. Okay. In 2016, my back went out on me. Um, I went through my first back surgery. They said I had from S1 to L5 that needed to be dealt with. And, of course, they didn't really explain to me exactly what they were going to do, but they told me that, you know, and I pretty much figured, I knew from previous friends that's had back surgeries, what happened to them, so I pretty much knew what was going to go on. Um, after that doctor got the surgery done, I hurt more in my back than I did before I walked in there. Oh, wow. And this guy actually told me, said, well, go ride your motorcycle after, I don't know, it was about six or seven months. He said, well, go, you, I didn't even want to ride. He said, well, try to go ride, go ride. I said, man, I hurt too much. He goes, well, try to ride. And I just wouldn't do it. So nine months later, from my first back surgery, I went through a second back surgery, all to find out that he didn't lock up one of the discs like he needed to. Mm-hmm. So they had to take all the hardware back out, which I got all my hardware they sent to me, and they went in there and put new hardware in. Well, after this surgery, it got worse. And I have been dealing with this, trying to get doctor after doctor. I've been going through pain management down here, up in Montgomery just wherever I could go to try to get some kind of help. And they wasn't helping me. Why? Because they give you a P test and you got a little THC in your system. They shut you down. Yeah. You know, so that's what exactly what was happening to me. And I was ex- I, and I just looked at them and said, well, what do y'all want me to do? Just stay home and hurt. You know, I said, I'm not going to do that. I mean, the only thing I'm going to do is if I got to stay home and hurt is I'm going to go home and I'm going to load my gun. I'm going to put a bullet in my head. Yeah. This, this is excruciating. This is beyond hurting. I mean, when you can't sleep for two hours at a time and you hurt for 24-7, you got to do something. And that's exactly what happened to me the other day. For two days, I stayed awake. I mm-hmm. hurt so bad, I had to go to the ER. Yeah. And I didn't go to the ER in my hometown. I went 20 miles away to Dothan to go to the ER down there. Because I know what this hospital will do to me. Nothing. Nothing for me. And I refuse to go to this. In fact, they call our, our, our hospital Death County. Oh, my goodness. So it's not got a good name at all. All right. So anyways, I've been fighting this and fighting this, trying to get help, trying to get help, and I just can't get it. I don't know if it's because I'm on Medicaid. I have no idea what the reason is, but I have been fighting to do things and, and, and try to get help just some relief and and I can't get it because they won't give it to me so they expect me to sit around and do nothing but hurt they're crazy I'm not going to do it 
So I upped my smoking, Mm -hmm. which costs me more, which I can't get medicines all through the month because I run out like two weeks before the end of the month. So for those two weeks, I'm suffering. You know, I'm trying to do the least as possible to keep me from hurting more. I lay in a bed. I walk 10 feet to my chair, and I sit in my chair, and I walk back and get in my bed. This is all I can do. Mm. And it's like when I went to that meeting, we parked, and I told them it took me five times I had to lay down on the ground to get inside that building. And then it was, you know, like going to the bathroom when I was in that meeting. Well, the bathroom was all the way on the other end of the of the building. I went, found some chairs, had to sit down. Got up from there, went to the bathroom. When I got to the bathroom, I didn't think I was going to make it back to the chair. But I walked down that hallway and got back in that chair. And I sat there until everybody come out of the meeting because I was done, done talking and all that. I didn't even get to see the, the machine the guy was talking about testing for DUI for, for marijuana. Um, I didn't even get to see that part. Uh, of course, people told me about it, but I didn't get to see it. And um, I, I couldn't do nothing. I mean, it's just just the way it goes. I mean, my back gives out, it gives out, it never gives me a warning. Um, my whole butt goes numb. Mm. My privates go numb. My legs go completely dead, and I go to the ground. I don't fall because I know it's coming, and I just go ahead and go on down. So I won't fall. And I have to lay there. Sometimes it might be 30 minutes and sometimes it might be three hours. You know, and I can't do nothing else about it. But if I smoke, don't get me wrong. If I smoke, I'm better. I don't know why, but it just it, it helps me out. It eases my pain down to where I can stand it. Don't take it all away. Of course, there ain't nothing that ever takes it away. But it takes it to where it's tolerable. Right. I can deal with it. You know, and it's the only thing that seems to work since I don't get nothing else because you can't take an aspirin and it's not going to fix it. It ain't even going to help you. They give me Tylenol 3s and that clogged me up and gave me hemorrhoids. So that was a problem on on top of my back. Good grief. Yeah. It just went from one extreme to another. Yeah. And I fought hemorrhoids. I fought hemorrhoids for almost two months, you know, trying to get them settled down. And and isn't that what uh, Sessions said whenever he was attorney general? We'll just take Tylenol? Yeah. Talking to the people that, that want to use cannabis? That's right. And, and they give you that Tylenol 3 with the, you know, which is a narcotic, I guess, now with the way they look at it. And and it does nothing for me. I mean, it absolutely did nothing. Well, and it's I mean, really bad I, for your liver, too. It didn't, didn't Tylenol pretty rough on the liver? And, and this is why I say drug drug addicts have a problem because when they take a pill and it doesn't do anything for you, well, you know, 30 minutes to an hour, they're taking another one. Yeah. And if that one don't work, then 30 minutes to an hour, they're taking another one. Mm-hmm. And, and, and this is what's causing our overdose problem. You know, yeah, people I, I just, just trying to like find relief. I don't think it's just, yeah, they're trying to find that relief on the ones that are sick that need it. And they just can't get it because it's just not working or you're getting addicted to it Mm -hmm. you know and i don't want to get addicted to a pill and after everything i read and see in the newspapers and on facebook and on the internet i don't want to be that person i refuse to be that person so i'm not a type of person that will take a pill i don't like to i have to because of some pills that i have to take um like the neurotin or the um um my level of thyroxine, actually, for my thyroid, I have to take. And, uh, the, and the Neurotin, which I take gabapentin, which is worse. They they put me on a full dose of gabapentin. And when I started easing my way up to that full dosage, if it wasn't for Susan, and she's an RN, um, I would have overdosed on it. Mm. Because I couldn't remember that I even took my pills right. Oh, wow. You know, and, and I got real loopy and I told that doctor, I said, I'm not doing that no more. I'm going back to taking it like I was. And he goes, that's fine. And I did. And I was fine with that. Well, that just keeps my cramps down to my legs a little bit and the muscles from jumping around constantly. My muscles and my bottom of my legs are the problem for me walking. It, it's been a fight. It's just been a real big fight. And I've I've never, I've always said, if I ever went to court, I'd never convict a cannabis person because I know how, I know what it's about. 
Well, sadly, a lot of people don't. I mean, they, especially in the South, because you know, I live in Texas, which is very conservative, and, and you live in the South as well. And a lot of people just have the opinion that, well, you're just a drug user, and there's no medicinal benefits, and you broke the law, so we're going to put you in a cage. That's right. That's exactly right. And, and they hold it against us. I mean, they don't even want to look at it. And, you know, they don't look at it as, uh, oh, well, this is medicine, and I'm sitting out there in my, into my driveway in my little electric chair when they come in with the guns pulled on me. Wow. You know, and knowing that I'm screwed up because this ain't, you know, I've been dealing with trying to get this town right. And this warrant thing led up to because the week prior before I got this warrant served on me, I was in Bob Bunnings, the mayor's office, and Marlos Walker, the chief of police, was there. I'd asked for the sheriff to be there and the fire police or, or the chief of the fire department so that I could discuss, but them slow down do the speed limit, and do the laws. And they refused to do it. Mm -hmm. He told me, why don't you go petition raising property taxes and gas taxes because we broke. We're trying to borrow money now. Wow. And this town has lost 500 people in the last 10 years. It has not grown. Why are they wasting money on a guy over a CBD bud if they're so broke? Yeah. And you think they tested that? No. I bet you they didn't. And it was about three quarters of an ounce and I got it from a CBD shop. Yeah. What, what is the law in, in Alabama? Do they have to prove that there's THC in order to try and get a conviction out of on you? Well, you would think so, but not around here. These yeah. cops are so crooked. And, and, and it's just like my lawyer that I used to use in this town. I quit using him because he told me one thing. Well, you know that we are in with the DA, the DA's in with the judge, the judges are in with the law, and, the, and, and there, he said, Tim, there's no winning. Yeah. And I said, you're telling me this? After all these years, I've used you, you're telling me this, and I quit using him. I don't use him no more, won't use him no more, because he just told me exactly what I didn't want to hear that everybody knows about, but nothing gets done about it. Mm-hmm. So it's a constant battle between hide, which I don't have a bunch of people coming to my house. I got my son that comes here. One of my best friends come here and my stepson comes here. And that's the only cars that are in and out of my driveway. And they want to come in here and saying that they've been watching me and, and this, that, and the other, which was baloney. It was a lie. It was a lie. My shed was getting broke into Three times my shed down here got broke into, and I had cops in this yard, and I've asked them to go down there and look, take pictures. Not a one went down there and looked. Then they come in on me, and they're trying to say, I got a grow going on down there because I built two rooms down there that I was locking my stuff up, trying to keep it more secured so they would have to go through not just one door, but three doors. Yeah. And I actually seen the person breaking into my shop, and I almost shot him. He's lucky I didn't. I told them that, and they did nothing. His girlfriend was the one that said I was growing $6,000 worth of marijuana. That's what they stole. Wow. And this is one of the reasons why they did come in on me. And believe me, I, I will grow if I could walk, but it sure wouldn't be indoors. It would be out in the woods because I can do it there. I've done it. You know, so it's nothing new to me. I can do that. My, right now, with the way my back is, right. I can't even walk 20 yards, and they're expecting me to have $6,000 with it. So the people that broke into your shed are the ones that were that accused you of, of growing marijuana? That's right. Oh, my gosh. That's right, because I talked to the detective, and I, I went up to the Ozark Police Department, and I told him, I said, I don't even want to tell you all this. And I did, and he said, well, can I open up a case on it? And I said, Sure. This ain't, boy, this, is going, this ain't going to end good for me. I can see it already. And, and from that point on, I knew it. Well, this investigator went and talked to her and told her exactly what I said. Mm. And then she lied about, but admitted that they broke in. But still, they're running around free. They didn't get arrested for it. Wow. So they admitted you know to, to burglary. But yeah. then she lied and said that there was marijuana being grown back there and they charged you. And they've done gotten they've done gotten arrested two other times for burglarizing. After this, and drugs. 
This girl's got a cocaine charge pending in Dothan. But but they're broke and that they can't afford to do anything. But they but they can come after you over a CBD bud. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Sure is. It's just really nuts. Do you think it is because you've become an outspoken advocate for the plant? You think they're targeting yes. you because of that? Yes. Yeah. Fully. Fully. This town's going to come down on me, and, and I'm re- I'm I'm going I'm going to fight that fight too, you know. But and it's like I told them, if I got to move out of this state to get help, that's going to be my last resort. But I want to see Alabama go legal, as far as medical. And if they don't go legal, then I'm out of here. I will put this house up for sale. I will sell it, and I will leave this state. You know, and they that that way they lose out on money. They lose out on everything. You know, and in fact. A girl that just got here not long ago, she's done put her house up for sale, and she's out November the 15th. She's going to Oklahoma. It, you know, I tell you, Oklahoma's law is great. And, and as far as the, you know, the culture in Oklahoma, I think is pretty similar to the culture here in, in Texas. And if I were in a position right. where I needed access to medical cannabis, that's where I would go. I would go to Oklahoma. Yeah. That's that's probably where I'm gonna go. I, I actually dated a girl here back in the day, and she's she's moved to uh, Owasso, Oklahoma, and I talk to her on the phone all the time, and she tells me what kind of stuff they got going on over there. And I'm telling you, it's it's getting really intriguing for me to just pack up and leave and say, you know, the heck with fight, just go somewhere legal and and don't deal with this. But I don't want. I mean, I lived in this state most of my life. Well, it's 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 a very difficult thing that people are faced with. It's like, do I stay in the state that I love, the the place where I have my roots, or do I, I pack up and move somewhere where I can have legal access to medicine that helps me? You know, because even even when they do pass cannabis laws in Alabama, how restrictive are they going to be? What what conditions are they going to allow you to to treat yourself for? What product are you going to be able to have access to? You know, a lot a lot of these states that have that have come online, especially in the South, they've been so restrictive. Yeah, one of the biggest things that I've noticed too is in these CB in these CBD shops, they're selling the hemp flower for as much as the marijuana. Yeah, that's. I looked at some. I looked. I went to Rite Aid to get my prescription, and they had some full spectrum CBD, hundred and twenty dollars a bottle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah, it's it's. It's crazy how expensive it is, but you know the other nice thing about Oklahoma is you can home grow. So yeah, if it's if it's something you know how to do, which it sounds like you've got experience with that, uh, oh, you would yeah. be allowed to do that. <laughs> and I and I don't see like I don't see Texas when and if they finally legalize, I don't see them approving home grow. And Alabama's yeah. probably going to be the same way. And you know we all know this: people are going to do it anyways. Right? Exactly. Yeah. They're going to do it anyways. They are. They, you know, how, how long have we fought the war on drugs? 80 years. 80 years, and it's not got any better yet. You're There's right. There's more drugs coming into this country that's killing people, and still through the marijuana, still coming into this country, and they they said, oh, well, we're, we're not going to dent in it. No, you ain't. No. Nope. I read it in the internet every day that, you know, this guy got caught with 46 pounds or 490 pounds or... You know, and I'm like, yeah, y'all are slowing it down. Right. One man got busted with a bunch of a bunch of kilos of cocaine coming up through Florida. Oh, they slowing it down, all right. Mm-hmm. And this is an everyday thing. Yeah. And it's been going on for years. I, I mean, as long as I can remember. Yeah, I I talked to a guy a few months ago, John Beza. He was an undercover narcotics officer in Harlem for mm-hmm. years, and I asked him, and he finally realized it, the futility in what he was doing. And I said, and I asked him, I said, did you ever feel like you were stopping the flow of drugs? And he said, no, never. You know, he said it was just a job. Right. And, and I right. think most police officers, if they're honest with themselves, like John was, they'll realize mm-hmm. it's a losing battle. You can't stop people from consuming a plant. Well, it's amazing. To me, because when I was 28 years old, I got busted with 9.65 ounces of marijuana. Mm -hmm. I only got charged $650 for it. Oh, wow. Three months worth of probation. But this is the reason. When I got up there in front of the judge, he said, I'm going to take the rest of my court cases to my chamber so that this other judge can swear in witnesses. 
I was the only one left. But I know why he did this, because I worked on his cars, his wife's cars, his daughter's cars, his family's cars. And he knew who I was. And he and he sat me in there, me and my lawyer. And he said, Tim, do you mind if I talk to you, me and you, just me and you? And I asked my lawyer to step out. And he did. And he said, man, I can't believe you in here on a drug charge, man. What are you doing? I said, dude, I got three kids, two stepchildren, one on the way. I, I, I got to make some money. We're in debt. I'm doing what I can, you know, to survive. And he says, I'm going to tell you what. He says, I'm going to make it easy on you this time. He said, but if you come back in front of me again, you're going to wish to God you didn't. And I've never been in trouble since then. And I'm 55 years old now. I just now got searched back in May and just got arrested just a few days ago. I told, and dig this, when I got to the jail, I said, y'all need to take me to the hospital. I am hurting. This is my first day that I was really hurting. I said, I'm hurting. They didn't even have a bond set for me. Oh, my gosh. But within five minutes after me screaming I wanted to go to the hospital, they had a bond just that quick. Not only that, I had to go to the bathroom. They put me in one, they, they didn't put me in a holding cell. They had me in just out there where the, the, you know, when they was bringing people in and out. I told them I had to go to the bathroom, so they had to open up one of the cell doors and let me in to go use the bathroom. Wow. The toilet don't work. There's a big old ring around the toilet that looks like mold. Mm. The toilet wouldn't even flush. Mm. And this is the jail that's down here. And I'm saying, and they got people in there. Yeah. With all that, I mean, it's, it's, I'm glad I wasn't in there that long. Mm-hmm. I mean, I really wasn't. I, I, I was, I was going to tell them I didn't have the money to get out just to see if they would release, release me for free. But I was hurting so dang bad, I wanted to get home. Yeah. Yeah, I don't blame you. Get back in my bed. I wanted to get home. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, so I, I'm in for the fight. So, And, and I'm hoping to go up to the, the, like I said, the SPLC and fight for my rights because they violated more than one. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like you could get the the ACLU involved, maybe. I probably could. I just haven't really looked into it all yet. Would Um, you qualify for a public defender since you're on a fixed income? Yeah. I mean, you have the right to a lawyer. If you can't afford one, one, one will be provided for you. But you think I want one of these lawyers around here? Right. Right. Yeah, they're going to push you to take a plea deal, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, and I'm not doing that. Yeah, especially over a I'll CBD this, bud. I'll put, this, I'll put this in front of the, the, the jury. I'll push it because I refuse to say I'm guilty for them violating my rights and listening to a lie and then arresting me on something that's supposed to be legal. You yeah, know, I mean, if, say, it, if there's a shop that you if, can buy if, it if at... I, if, if if this if this stuff wasn't illegal, then they better go to Honeysuckle Hemp Company down there in Dothan and shut their <laughs> doors and and arrest every damn one of them. Yeah, they haven't tested it. That I mean, that's just they're trying to they're trying to bluff you, trying to get you to con, uh, confess to something illegal. I'm sure. Well, I won't do that. Well, Tim, I wish you the best in the fight. I, I hope that I hope that you can overcome it and and keep me posted on it because I'd like to know how things go for you. Well. This is why I told that committee. This is why I told that committee I was mad. I'm mad because I get no help. I'm mad because I get stereotyped. I'm mad because I have to sit here and cry my eyeballs out. You know, I'm, I'm mad. I don't blame you. And I'm upset. You know, and it, and it gets to me. And I'm, you know, I'm not much on crying, but I've sat here and cried day after day after day, and I'm, I'm through with it. I, you know, I need help. I, I don't blame you, Tim. I, I, if I were in your position, I, I'd. It's a very, I can't even imagine the level of frustration to know that there's this plant that can help me and I can't even have legal access to it. I have to, I'm treated like a criminal. Well, when I go to this meeting on November 7th, I'm going to ask them committee members, are you going to help me? You're going to help me? Look what they're doing to me. You're going to help me? And I'm probably going to get no. And that's a sad thing. That's really a, you know, and then. And then they want to sit there and tell us that they're doing this research and they can't find nothing past it. You know, they hand us a piece of paper that's a lie. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I didn't like that. And and I have, uh, Miss Aretha Dix, I have sent her articles after article after, I bet you I sent her 10 things a day on research. And no, there's nothing here in Alabama. What's Birmingham doing? 
That's what I want to know. Or better yet, what's Mississippi doing growing all that marijuana, yet nothing comes out of there? What research has come out? Not much of anything. Yeah, and, and apparently the quality of what they grow there is not very good. I, I know there was exactly. a, there's a lawsuit by uh, Dr. Sue Sisley or Sisley, I can't remember how you pronounce her last name, because the quality that they're that they're growing there is terrible quality. And so she's exactly. saying, Hey, we need we need access to some good some good bud, not this junk, <laughs> not this ditch weed y'all are growing here. We have a hemp grower that was had a had a farm and a friend of mine was gonna go see it. Well, he went out there and while while he was out there, they were people out there testing it. Um, they were getting, you know, certain plants and picking it to go test it. Um, also he had the sheriffs out there because someone stole a hundred plants. Well, when they got done with their tests and everything, it was over 0.3. They burnt the whole crop. Why? It will make paper. It will make things, uh, rope, all kinds of stuff. Why burn it? Well, it's over that, that magical number. You cost that farmer a lot of money by doing that. Yeah, yeah exactly. But see, I just read today on an article where they were talking about, well, they're going to try to allow up to 0.5. Really? Now you're going to change the rules again. I mean, it, it's it's insane. In Texas, they just recently, they upped the, the THC percentage of our, our compassionate use program, which is a complete total farce, from 0.3 mm-hmm. to 0.5%. That, you know, right. that 0.2% of THC is, is really going to make a huge difference. Yeah, right. maybe it will for some people, but, but really, really, 0.5? You'll get you a headache trying to smoke to get high if that's the case, <laughs> and, uh, if they're just trying to get high on it. You'll get a headache before you even get high. Um, but you know, like anything, no two plants are the same and it's impossible to have a strain that's going to be 0.3% all the time. If you stress that plant, you'll jump it up above one and two, you won't get past 3%, but I mean on a hemp plant, but you can, you can stress it enough to put some more into it. Well, and, and even like different times a day when they test those plants, the per, the percentage can vary, and even different right. parts of different buds on the plant are going to have different t- THC percentages. That's you know, it, it's just for them to How you dry it exactly it makes a and, difference. Yeah, and yeah. the the people that are testing it, they don't know anything about this plant. The the people making the rules around it, they know nothing about this plant. Well, supposedly they do. Right. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's kind of funny to read it, but. You know, they seem to know everything. And, well, they and think they, they do. And that kills me, too, because when you try to educate someone who don't want to be educated, then you can't educate them. You know, that's, that's absolutely that's true. Part. Yeah. Well, there's so many negative people out here that close their minds to it. Mm-hmm. You know, but God put this plant down here for a reason. And he gave us seeds to live off of, to heal us, to help us. And this is one of them. And it ain't killed nobody. I ain't, ain't killed a dead. You know, I tried to look up what the difference of just alcohol-related drivers that had wrecks to just THC drivers that had wrecks, and you can't find nothing on it. It's going to be a mixture of the drugs, but you won't find just, okay, well, this was strictly THC, and he he was involved in a wreck that killed four people, but he was strictly on THC. You can't find a percentage on that. There's not one. It's always, and, and it's like the last meeting, they wanted to talk about, well, alcohol and, and marijuana or alcohol and opioids. It's always alcohol that they're involving this with. Right. But which is totally illegal. I'm not up there in a, in a medical marijuana meeting wanting to talk about alcohol and marijuana mixed. Mm -hmm. That's the people who do it and drink and, and I'm not a drinker, but anybody who does beer or alcohol and smoke pot. Yeah. There's going to be a problem, but I don't think it's the marijuana. It's going to be the booze, you know, and I find that, I find this just, it's embarrassing for me to go up there and this guy get up there and start relating it to alcohol or opioids, you know, or, or combination of the two. Well, it was a combination that caused the problem, not just a single thing. And we all know anybody who drinks and drinks only drinks, don't do anything else. They involve in an accident somewhere down the line or their DUI. I've seen them, I've seen them walk out bars and dang near fall on their face and get inside of a car and drive. What was it this morning? I seen this lady was uh, parked with a needle stuck out of her arm with a kid in the back seat. Heroin. Yeah, they, they always want to move the goalposts. They don't want to just talk about cannabis. They want to talk about cannabis plus this, cannabis plus that. And it's like, yeah, but the, the root cause of the problem is not the cannabis. Right. 
you know, I didn't know how much vitamins was even in cannabis, and I haven't looked that up. Now I just got shocked. Mm-hmm. The good qualities of even eating it. Yeah. With all the vitamins that's in it. Yeah. I, I, I didn't. I, I really didn't know. I mean, when I read it, I was like, wow. Mm-hmm. Man, at the vitamins that are that are in it, I was just blown away by it. Yeah, there's people that when they talk whole plant, they talk. They mean whole plant. They use the. The leaves, they use the roots, you know, they'll juice them or, you know, do a lot of things with it. And it's just, it's an amazing plant. And, and people, they're just so scared of the, of the THC that they don't look beyond that to, to look at all the other benefits of the plant. They think because you smoke THC, you're dumb, you're stupid, you're, you're, you know, you don't know what you're doing. And, and that's, that's a lie. That depends on how long you've been smoking or whether you just started or not. And there's a tolerance. Just like anything, if you smoke daily, it's a tolerance. And the people who used to get slammed high don't get slammed high no more. I mean, they get a buzz from it or they get a good go- a, a good thing going, but they don't get to that canatonic state like they did one time before. You know, and um, I disagree with a lot of this stuff because they're trying to put something that ain't right. And, and telling us that this is the cause of a lot of problems when a lot of these people who's been smoking more than four or five years know better. You know, when I first started smoking, it used to give me the munchies. It used to clean the cabinets out. But you know, after after about six or seven years of smoking, I didn't get the munchies no more. I quit getting them. In fact, I dang near quit eating. <laughs> 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 Which probably did me some good because it lost a lot of weight from it. But, um, Needless to say, I, I just didn't get those munchies no more. Now, if I sat down and started eating, I could eat a good, healthy plate. But I just didn't get the munchies where I went in there and wanted sweets or candy. or And I'm not a sweet eater anyways or a candy eater. I'm, you know, I just never have liked it. And, um, and then I'm looking at these pills that are doing things to me that I don't like. I can't stand um, because I have to keep taking them. And and when they don't work, I want to take one more. And I, I'm just, I, I, it scares me to do that because of what I read and what I hear. Yeah. And I don't want to be that person. I, you know, I'm tired of being in that closet, hiding, scared, you know, not doing nothing about it. I want to get out. I want to do what God tells me to do and go help people. You know, I didn't really think of what my life, my life mission would probably be. And I always question about why I'm, what, what am I doing? Well, I got out of the closet. I quit being scared. What are they going to do? Throw me in prison? They, they gonna have. Pay for my, <laughs> my, they're going to pay for my back? They're right. going to pay for my back and do all this? Well, if that's what it takes, then that's what I'll do. You know, I mean, that's just plain fact. I mean, they charged me with a misdemeanor, a second degree misdemeanor with, with under an ounce. Wow. I see people getting charged a felony for a roach. Not only that, they use a no-knock warrant. Okay, wow. well, I always understood that a no-knock warrant shouldn't be used unless they know that there's weapons there with a lot of people that they know they need to go in with a no-knock warrant. I'm not that dangerous of a person. <laughs> so they did a no-knock warrant on you over a CBD bud? Yep. Wow. But but they're broke. They don't have money. But they yep. can serve according a no-knock according warrant. To our, according to our mayor. I mean, that's what he told me, to go around petition to raise gas taxes and property taxes. And we are a retirement town by Fort Rucker. Well, you'd be the least popular person in town if you were trying to raise taxes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, see, one of our ex-narcotics blowed himself in the head because he knew how wrong he was. Mm-hmm. You know, it's sad. It's really, really sad to hear when uh, all the stuff that goes on. Right. Until more people get up and decide, no, we're tired of this. It's not going to, one, one, one man's not going to do anything. You'll just become a target. Which sounds like you already have. Yeah, I I, I knew I was going to put a target on my back. I, I I tell them all the time. I know I just put a target on my back. Big whoopee. I don't speed. I use my blinkers. I don't need no more on me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, Tim, I appreciate you coming on today and and sharing your story. I hope everything turns out okay with your uh, with those pending charges. Hopefully, you can get an attorney that'll fight for you. Well, I plan on and I know my rights. I'm 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 well up on my rights, and I will coach this lawyer as need be. But uh, you know, <laughs> if not, then I'll I'll request another one. No, no big deal. 
I mean, I'll go through them all if I got to. I appreciate your, your outspokenness and your advocacy. I know that there's a lot of people that are afraid to come out of the shadows that appreciate it as well. And uh, wish you the best at this meeting that's coming up in November. Hopefully, hopefully they listen and, and we'll get something passed pretty soon for you guys so you can get some relief. Yes, ma'am. I sure hope so. And I know status quo keeps a lot of people in their closets, but, you know, maybe one day they'll learn how to be brave enough to come out and fight for something that was good. You know, especially if they legalize this, maybe they'll go somewhere else and fight for somebody. Yeah, we, we need more people that are that are willing to do that. But it, it's scary to I me mean, because, you know, they've especially if you've got kids or you've got a good job, it's scary to come out of that closet because you have a lot, a lot to potentially lose. I try to help a lamp with the carpool and we try to get as many people as we can there. You know, we try to get people to get rides. If they need a ride, we'll get them a ride. Yeah. I think there's a Facebook group for it. You know, and we got drivers, we got drivers all over the place. Now we just don't have enough riders, but we got drivers and we do have a lot of people that's going to show up for this next one. So um, I feel like we're going to have a pretty good turnout. And hopefully everything, you know, they'll look at this, you know, they'll start realizing this. And I can't wait until next year when they open it up on a ballot, we can go in there and, and, and actually argue the point. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Well, good luck. And I hope the I hope you guys pack the meeting out. Well, I do too. Well, it's a fight and it's a good fight and I'm going to fight it until I can't fight no more. You know, if I got to crawl, if I got to crawl to this meeting, if I got to be pushed in there in a wheelchair or in a bed, I'm going to this meeting. I mean, I, I just refuse not to. And I would have went to the other ones if I would have just been more not afraid to come out. Yeah. So, but I do appreciate you calling me and getting yes. in touch with me and let me tell you my story and, and the situations that I come into. And and I want to get it out there. You know, I'm, I'm glad. Well, I appreciate you telling the story and, and keep up the advocacy work. And, and I'll stay in touch because I'd like to, to know how things play out on the legal side for you. Hopefully... Hopefully sure. you can get a good attorney on that. I'll be glad to talk to you anytime, anytime. All right. Sounds great, Tim. Thank you so much. Thank you. All righty. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Good day. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye. Show notes for today's episode can be found out at CannabisHillsby.com slash 79. If you are interested in attending this Medical Cannabis Commission meeting, I'm going to put a link to that Facebook page where you can link up or catch a ride with somebody. I know a lot of people that are that that take medical cannabis are on a fixed income and so they've got a way for you to carpool and be able to ride with someone else, share the cost of that of going down to that medical commission meeting. So go out and check out the show notes page on that. And uh, I encourage you, if you're in Alabama, get involved. Share this story with other folks and let them know, hey, there are people that are hurting and they need access to this medicine so that they can use it instead of all these horrific opioids and Tylenol that are terrible for your body. So share the episode and we will be back here next week with another healing story. Till then, you guys have a great week. Thanks. Bye. Hit the subscribe button and you'll never miss an episode of the Cannabis Heals Me podcast. If you enjoyed today's show, please consider leaving us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, or whatever podcast app you're using. Do you have a suggestion for a guest on Cannabis Heals Me? Send an email to podcast at CannabisHealsMe.com. We'd love to hear from you. Please do not take any information from Cannabis Heals Me or its guests as medical advice. Contact your licensed physician before taking cannabis or using it for medical treatments.